ones. Yeah, but I imagine these first ones are just going to be blitzed yeah. on through because we do have a general idea now of uh, what people wanted to get rid of. As it went up to the Janna, I believe, was when the issues yeah. were brought to everyone's attention. So that's where the patient bands will start to differentiate. And Sydney, they're taking their time with these bands when we should already know where they will be going now. This is an important question, actually. This sometimes is going to determine who will win and lose. Who has the best username out of everyone here? I'm personally a fan of, you know, the Vegan Bandit. Ooh. I think that that's quite a catchy one. Um, nice joke. <laughs> I'm a fan of. So you also, just like New South Wales. I do. Here's a question. Yeah? Technically, that game didn't oh, Is this a new dice roll? Nah. Nah. No, it's the same the dice, bands. The dice knew this was going to happen? Perhaps. Okay. I mean, the game didn't happen yet. It's the that's same true. pick and ban. That's so true. That, that's not a, that's a no contest. We're still waiting to get this one in. I have to say, you know, I like simple names. Yes. I like easy to pronounce names. And I like, you know, the, with the hint of comedy. So Zoot, Zoot. is my pick. Forward. Although I also do really enjoy Thomas Shen. I think, you know. Yes. Thomas Shen, uh, attorney at law, is a beautiful, beautiful call. Uh, because of where the Genovan was located, that does mean the Shivana actually is uh, being run in yeah. this game. So, very excited to see what kind of Shivana this is. Is it going to be, you know, the solo queue AP Shivana? Is it going to be the more traditional sort of bruisery tank Shivana? I feel like you can go either way. Yeah, and because the the band changes, this changes up completely these last four picks and what could be potentially picked here. Uh, as Jana is still on the table, as that was the I think last the one. The Jana ban is the one that goes through. So nope, actually that was the mistake. So Nautilus, yeah, banned. So this is still a potential Jana game for forward, who has played very well so far on that champion, as well potentially a vegan bandit on the Jana. Vegan yeah. has also played Jana successfully in this tournament. No one's playing Jana. Not allowed. No, no one's allowed. No one's, no one's allowed. allowed. Never mind. Yep. No Jana allowed. No uh, Jana hype. Because everyone loves Jana. Like, clearly the most popular support. I'm sure everyone's just absolutely devastated to see her band. Yeah, away. everyone's very sad. Um, I'm hoping for a Thresh pickup on the side of you, Sid. Just for some fun, hard engage. I doubt it's going to happen, but, you know, my I can dream. Well, what we will be seeing is that Volley Bear Volibear. that will go through. So, Zarnos is going to be taking that up top. And in the bot lane, it's going to be the Nami compared with the misfortune again another enchantress support does make sense if you can't get jenna nami pretty similar you got your knockups you have your knockbacks you have that movement speed boost so as well as the attack damage boost so like very similar kits when you think about it in terms mm. of what they provide in team fights on the opposite side though shen currently being hovered now we're still waiting to see what the top laner will be atrox will be that last one yeah. in. atrox has i think been hovered as a final pick in every single game today yeah I, I think he has been, actually. He's been hovered last pick. Um, what's your opinion on this pick uh, or against the Volley Bear? How do you think that's going to go? I'm worried early mm -hmm. for Ozo and this yeah. Aatrox. I think uh, early game definitely is on the side of Sydney. And even then, as we move forward, I'm not sure New South Wales has that super late game team. Like, these are two teams that want a fast start and want to snowball it and those usually make for either the most chaotic exciting mm. fun games or neither team wants to give up the snowball to the other side and we go like 22 minutes without a kill yeah so it's either that they both play ridiculously safe so that neither can get ahead and then we just have a 65 minute slug fest while they try and catch up huh. uh, or we get a you know 10 minute game with someone running down with 28 kills yeah, it could be anything. Like, there's a lot of ways this can go, but definitely when you get two aggressive team comps, it's always something interesting, and there's always going to be something to talk about. So very keen to get in this one. This is essentially for supremacy in this tournament. Minus one Swinburne. Yeah. Can't forget about them. Nope. They are undefeated, but they are. if you're looking at strength of schedule, if you're looking at favorites, whoever wins this is going to be that number one team, the one that all the other teams are going to be looking to overtake. So... We threw out the poll right there. Who do you think is going to win? Will it be the University of Sydney? Will it be the University of New South Wales? We, as well as the Dice, have all said Sydney. I believe we're doing it. We said New South Wales. We all said New South Wales. That, that poll's upside down. Um, but who is it going to be? 
Oh, uh, I still think I still think you said he's going to come away with this one. Um, uh, I did say Sydney. What am I saying here? Yeah, you said Sydney. Sydney. Yeah, blue side, blue side never lied. The dice. Yeah. Um, I still think Sydney. I really like the team comp. Um, I like how they're throwing in a little bit of unpredictability with stuff like the volley bear. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's it's a different pick. We haven't seen it in this tournament so far. So it can bring something different to the game, and an unknown element could be just what they need to get that edge over another competitively viable team. Absolutely, absolutely. And I'm really excited to see how Zarnos plays this volley bear. I mean, we've seen him pop off on the Nocturne. It was actually pretty great to rock yeah. as a uh, Nocturne main. Always makes me <laughs> feel happy when I see my favorite champion picked and played well, although no one ever seems to play him jungle in the games I cast. He's always put either mid or top for whatever yeah. reason. Uh, it is what it is. And I'm still very keen to see this volley bear. Very relieved I'm not coming up against it. That is for sure. But don't want to discount New South Wales. Their team composition has some spice themselves. That that um, Shivana is definitely yeah. going to be a uh, eye catcher. That fast clear, that early pressure, it could come through. And I'm hoping to see, you know, if it is AP, some pretty crazy one shots coming out of it. Yeah. And the sooner we get on the rift, the more better. That is for sure. Yeah. Well, if it's an AP Shivana as well, then that really gives uh, UCID, uh, sorry, UNFW a slightly more scaling team comp that they don't have at the moment. If they can get the Dark Harvest um, Shivani in there, then they don't really mind if it starts going a little longer because, hey, Ezreal's going to hit that power spike. Uh, Shivan is going to have, um, you know, a lot of damage coming out. So I, I'm, I'm, I think that's going to be key to figuring out what these team comps win, uh, win cons are. Yeah, I, th I definitely feel that is the case. Jungle tracking, as always, is going to be super important for each side. Uh, no one wants to let, you know, a Shivana get a hot start because they can yeah. snowball if given that opportunity. We're on the other side, Zach. Well, he's a bit more of a farmer, but once he gets a couple assists, you know, he's no slouch either. Heck, we could even see, you know, the full AP Zach all of a sudden come out. Remember that? I think it was like two, three years ago where that was the meta build and your one shot and 80 carries with your elastic slingshot like those were the uh I, actually those, you know what those were not the good old days i hated those days. i was gonna say those were dark times well what annoyed me about that was um i was trying to be you know get my mastery seven zach need my s and s plus grades have a game where i went one zero and 36 playing tank zach <laughs> jesus a minus oh no because That's... not enough kills because what are you doing was... getting assists yeah, you need kills. You, you need kills. You're not AP Zach. You're your tank Zach. All right. So you ain't oh, you ain't boy. killing anyone. A minus. And I have ever since uh, loathed the AP Zach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you got a personal vendetta against uh, that. It's just another name to the list. I have I have so many champions and like playstyles on my personal vendetta list. One day I'll read them all out. And we can have a bit of a giggle, but we'll have a I just stream dedicated. It's absolutely. It'd be like a. It'd be one of those like twenty-four hour charity streams. Um, as it stands, though, a pretty stock standard start line of scrimmage was there. It's broken away. No invades tonight, so a little bit sad. But I think each of these two teams they have higher aspirations than a fiesta in a river. They each want to play this game intelligently. They each want to make sure they win in class and style. So standard starts, pretty standard play so far. Yeah, pretty standard play. And we do, in fact, get the Dark Harvest Shivana um, in the jungle. So potentially going to see some uh, <laughs> some dirty one-shots this game. Yeah, we, we, we definitely might. Um, we definitely, definitely might. I do like to see that Dark Harvest. So it also is a bit of a late-game cushion. Similarly, Sydney does have that late-game cushion as well with the Volley Bear um, and the Zac. So there is some tank. There is some front line as more tech issues happening for forward it appears yeah. it's a quick pause though we will be resuming straight away so obviously that wasn't something too too serious uh back into this one you know what blink and you miss the pause yeah you blink and it is gone um yeah so something to take note of as well Usid has opted for a slightly more defensive bot lane uh summoner spell choices going for the exhaust onto the nami instead of the ignite so i think you know realizing that Batty and Vegan Bandit can potentially put out a lot of damage, especially in conjunction with a Shivana gang. And I think they, you know, they're respecting that and trying to, you know,
go for a slightly slower start. Mm. I always get nervous when I see the exhaust as we see the elastic slingshot connecting actually onto Ozo, who's in a bit of trouble right now. He's going to get thrown back deeper, and this is going to be your first blood actually going to be going to the University of Sydney. The question is, who's going to pick it up? It's going to go to Udisoft as he kind of stole it away right there with that auto attack and the help of the red buff. So a little bit of a sad day for Zoranos, but a sadder day for the University of New South Wales. Yeah, I think it would have been a very good idea to give Zoranos that kill. Um just because getting that volley there up and going early is just going to make that lane ridiculously difficult for Ozo um, going into that. Smart by him not to use the TP to get back into lane, knowing that the repeat gank potential from the Zac is definitely there, uh, opting to just walk it down back to lane. Yeah, as you can see, you know, Udisoft is now looking towards that mid lane. The stun connects. Nice joke. He has a wave pushing. Not a lot of mana. And I don't think he's expecting the Zac to come yet again. A great reaction flash, though. Will keep Nice Joke alive, but Udisoft, aware that he's probably going to be losing out in the farming race, has opted for ganks instead. Yeah, you know, very smart play there. You know, he's already 10 CS down because of his escapades in top and mid. But that being said, he's got a kill for his, his uh, you know, he's got a kill for it on, him, on himself. So, you know, he's opted for that. He's understood that, hey, I'm going to be down on... She's got a faster clear than me. I need to be more proactive. And he's done that. Yeah, he has done that. And it is working out for him so far. I mean, at this stage of the game, though, still very early. That first blood is going to be helpful. But what I find a little bit distressing is the fact that Zaranos, by freezing that wave, has also kind of put Ozo back in a tough situation where he's pretty far pushed forward. And going by Udisoft's jungle paths, we could be seeing return ganks to this top side of the map. And this is what makes Zarno so good at the top lane. His wave management is near immaculate at times. Yeah, no, his ability to get a lane into a winning position and hold it there is incredibly, uh, you know, brutal to play against. Because like you said, Ozo at this point has to step up if he wants any XP, if he wants to play this game. But by stepping up, he just gets in a position where, hey, we've already show seen that Udisoft has shown, you know, the inkling that he likes to go top lane. So he can just keep doing that, but it looks oh, like he might nice be going to Nice joke has again. no mana and no flash. So here comes Udisoft. Great scatter of the week does connect. The damage is being put down, but those autos, as well as the casters, actually return the favor. And nice joke is able to find one. Udisoft has to back away as Mincam as well as Vegan Bandit were making their way to the mid lane. And nice joke, great outplay considering the limited resources he had. Yeah, very good outplay by him. I'm fortunate for Udisoft opting not to, you know, use the second part of the queue on one of the minions in lane to put the CC down, opting just to try and go for the auto attacks instead. Um, as we see the ultimate oh coming down gosh. two levels of advantage. A, yeah, under the tower we go. There's the volley bear pass. The Zoranos is going to be fine. And Ozo, uh, this is turning from Ozo to Ono because this top lane is starting to look like a bit of a disaster zone. Yeah, no, it's definitely looking misfortunate for their top lane right now. So um, that's and the thing is, though, it gets to a point where he can just keep doing this because he he can just keep shoving him under the tower. Oh, he teleported it back. back. Yeah, he, he teleported back trying to catch the wave. But I don't know if that's going to be it. Like, he's just going to be able to well, actually. What was that? Uh, look it was a scuttle if, fight. It was a scuttle, yeah. scuttle, scuttle scuffle. No one um, wants to give up their life for a scuttle bug. So University of New South Wales, they're going to begrudgingly accept that the scuttle is gone. Zarnos finally doing his first back. As you can see, he already has like accrued, you know, just about 2,200 gold. And no, he's not actually backing yet. He was just getting some vision before returning to lane as another gank in the mid lane. Nice joke. Still does not have flash, but... The ultimate from Udisoft throws him a bit too deep for the play to go through, and a lot of mid pressure being put on by the University of Sydney. Yeah, a lot of pressure being put on by Udisoft, which is great to see. And if you want to, you know, if you wanted a clip of what wave, manipul wave manipulation does to a game, just take that clip of uh, this. Just take this clip right here and be <laughs> like, hey, this is what correctly phrasing does. It puts the opposition at a position where they cannot do anything and have to try and break the freeze yeah they have to try and break the tree um freeze and in this instance they're going to have to do so with a jungler who you know would much rather be farming and exerting map pressure as 
at the moment now. Fortunately for the University of New South Wales, they actually did get that first dragon. So I think that's what that fight was that happened down below, which unfortunately we missed. So it does sort of open up the map a bit for Mincam to actually put that pressure on the top lane. But Zarnos, he is happy to fight a 2v1 under this tower, or is he? Because he will fall, but the tower does get one back, courtesy of the Ignite as well. So a one for one in the tower dive. Ozo continuing to have a rough game, but hey, at least he'll be getting some tower pressure. Yeah, you know, at least they'll be getting... Oh, the flat, the early flash. Yeah, I, is Udisoft that scary? I think he was respecting the fact that the, he didn't know where Zoot was. And that there was a potential uh, Syndra gank there as well coming from the jungle. But, you know, even so, a very early flash coming out from Mincam just to avoid anything. Uh, going back to what just happened, though. Uh, that's, how, that's where we see how strong already the Volley Bear is as we get a fight in mid lane. Yeah, Zoot, you know, he's trying to get down as many balls as possible. You have to think the players at this level are completely aware of where those kill thresholds are. Nice joke will be as well. It's why it's important for him to dodge all of this poke. And he might be looking for something back, but there is the Sky of the Week connection. However, the ultimate isn't quite enough to bring Nice Joke down, who does have to flash. Nice Joke in a bit of a tight situation. There is some help above him with Min Cam, but it's unlikely we're going to see an engage. Very unlikely. If we see a very good scatter of the week here into the corner, that could be problematic. Um, oh. oh. Ozo still in a bit of trouble. Udisoft doesn't want to follow through this time. Ultimates are not actually available at the moment in the top side of the map, so a tower dive is a little bit risky. That said, we still might see that attempt as soon as the wave will crash. Ozo aware of this did drop some vision, but Zoot is here as well, and in a 3v1, Chilling Smite's already been used. He's going to get pulled back into the team mid camp. He's going to try and perhaps make a rescue effort, although it's too little too late. It's Ozo's already dead, and there is nothing for mid cam here but sadness, so he's probably going to have to back out. Yeah, after a very well-placed scatter the week, it was over for Ozo there with the amount of damage and CC that they had there already. This bear is getting incredibly scary with currently no answer on the side of UNFW. Yeah, I mean, we might be looking at a flame horizon if this pace mm. continues. Zaranos, an absolute monster in the top lane. Udisoft as well has been supplying that pressure mid as well. And that's kind of been keeping the mid lane uh, relevant. Zoot hasn't had that same success now where we haven't seen too much action has been this bot lane but just going from the cs alone at the moment it does seem as if thomas shen even has the small advantage there and university of new south wales you know they came into this 2-0 pretty high expectations on them but this is not the start they were looking for no this isn't the start that we're looking for at all um baddie is i think he's willing to let the bot lane you know freeze in a sense like stalemate uh, just stack up that, you know, stack up that tier, try to get an advantage. But he's slightly behind in CS, which is problematic, as it looks like we're going to be getting an Infernal Drake taken here by the side of UNSW. Obviously, Shivana, an incredibly yeah, strong champion at taking dragons. Yeah, surprise, will surprise. we see a steal attempt? If we do, it's going to come too little too late. So if there's anything going the New South Wales way, it is these dragon takes. So... They're definitely still fighting in this one. There's a bit of action actually happening as Ozo tried to make a roam to the mid lane. Not going to find anything. And as this is going on, well, that's just going to be a free tower for Zaranos. And He's now this just... map is going to get opened up. And this is going to get worse for New South Wales. Yeah, Zaranos is just opting to proxy farm this one. Um, denying as much CS as possible as we had a... Oh, there we go. Yeah, oh, a bit of a fight happening forward. Could be in a bit of trouble, actually. He is the focus, but the Aqua Prism does connect. And Minkham has to back out. Great disengage coming from the Sydney side. Yeah, you said had to blow three summoners there, but hey, oh no, Ozo. <laughs> Ozo is already gone. Having to prop the world ender, it looks like, for that little bit of movement speed, perhaps, to try and escape in that sense. But Zarnos, he's just going deeper <laughs> in the jungle. He's going to cut him off, and bad times for Aatrox, indeed. He's trying to find any way out, and the attempt is going to be in the Baron Pit. Udisoft, he is aware, though. He's going to launch himself in and <laughs> finds him, and... Well, he should be able to bring him down. Ozo going to try and do what he can. Actually gets the ultimate out of Udisoft, so it's not the cleanest situation in the world, but Zoot will get the kill. Zoot needs it more than Zarnos. I'm okay with that, and Sydney continues the snowball. Yeah, that's a very a very good, uh, big kill to put onto Zoot. Zoot now having a kill in that mid lane. Oh, oh. great arcane shift forward from Batty. Gets the kill. It's a one for one, and now Vegan Batty has to survive against a misfortune. Might actually be able to if Thomas Shen more interested in the farm than continuing that fight. Yeah, you know, they, at that point, they were just going for the trade support uh, support for, uh, for ADC. Um, so slightly more worth for the side of Usid, you know, shutting down that 
um, Ezreal, this is, you know, it is time that he cannot stack his tier, so that's going to put him slightly behind. Uh, meanwhile, you know, Thomas Shen is still getting things, uh, CS, as we have a Herald being popped in the mid lane by Yusin. Yeah, Herald has been dropped right now, and that's going to be a couple more plates going over to this dude who, despite, you know, kind of the slower start for Sydney because of that awkward gank before, well, he is still getting a lot of gold going his way with the kill, with that power plating, and this is just more and more pressure being put on the New South Wales side. Yeah, it's only a three and a half K differential uh, if you look at the overall gold difference. But really, though, when you're looking at the momentum, when you're looking at how these teams are playing, University of New South Wales, they're going to need to find, I think, a couple pretty clutch team fights if they're going to fight back into this match. Yeah, well, when you look at the gold differential, about three, three point one K of it is on Zora, uh, Ozo. He's mm. about three and a bit. Oh, oh no. this is the play that gets you back in it, though. Forehead will be caught out. Great gank coming from the New South Wales side, and Thomas Shen's gonna have to back away for now, and this is, you know, what New South Wales, they had attempted it a couple times before, but finally, they're getting that cross-map pressure. Yeah, you know, they finally, Min Cam has been able to get, you know, some control in a lane before it's only been, you know, uh, objective control, but finally able to get a, a successful gank off um, in that lane. In the we bot have, lane. Yeah, and something to point out, we have the you know, the Mountain Soul is going to be, um, you know, the soul of this game. And for both teams, but almost, I think almost more so for the side of UNSW, having mm. that on Ozo, Mincam, and Vegan Bandit, could like, that could be what they need to get back into this. They already have the two dragon advantage. Yeah. That being said, if Yusid is able to get dragon control and get four Mountain Drakes onto Zoronis, Udisoft, anyone, that's going to be rough. At the same time, I don't see a world where um, Yusid is actually going to be getting that Mount Drake because at the pace that they're going, they might be looking to end well before that becomes a possibility mm. for themselves. Uh, credit where credit is due, though, for the University of New South Wales. They had been controlling the bot half of the map. They just don't have that same tower that University of Sydney has, so it looks a bit more dramatic. But the fact that New South Wales has been able to get two dragons, have been putting pressure on that bot side, does tell me they are doing the correct thing. You know, they're playing to their strong side. But it's just not been at the same pace that Sydney has been as well as a result. Sydney has been able to take that pressure in mid lane as well. Nice joke. First to burn Flash. Still not out of the woods yet. Misses with the Shockwave and then gets popped by everyone. Suit picks up yet another kill. Yeah, that's a lot of damage coming down. Zoranis could probably actually turn this in reality. Yeah, it looks like he's going to try. He's going to get Uzo and he has a bit of health and he's still staying alive. Mid cam doing what he can. <laughs> actually has to get a little bit of help from Vegan Bandit and... It's a 1v3. Zorno still gets one. True Shot Barrage is not enough to save the tower. And Sydney, they're just taking tower after tower, and now their eyes are set on that bot one. Yeah, Zorno is opting for the press the attack over the Conqueror. Oh, no. Baddie stuck around, and that probably wasn't the smart choice. He's going to try and run away. Bullet time actually used to secure that kill, and <laughs> poor, poor, poor Zoot doesn't even get involved. That's okay, though. That will be the third tower most likely falling in the very near future. But more importantly for Sydney is getting that third Mountain Drake and probably stopping, you know, University of New South Wales win condition. Yeah, and this is what we were talking about a moment ago where we was we were saying we can't see UC getting that dragon control. They just got it. Um, so, you know, this is one of those moments where this could be a deciding factor. Mincam, yeah, going on to the Herald, smart play, but he's going to get caught out and... I can't see him being able to get this. I don't know. This is still 3 oh, um Shivana, who has the smite. So I imagine it's going that way. That said, teleports are coming through. And Midcam, he's kind of nursing the fight. He's actually going to give up the Herald. I am shocked by that. I thought yeah. for sure New South Wales was going to look to contest it. Yeah, that is that is about as bad as that can get right now. They've just given over the Mountain Drake. And their consolation prize in the Herald has just been taken away from them. So right now, Yusid not in a happy spot. No, not at all. And talk about a statement ultimate coming from Midcam, just conceding it right there, using the ultimate to escape. That just the amount of respect being shown towards the University of Sydney. I mean, granted, they've done everything in that power to earn the respect, especially on the top half of the map. But at some stage, you know, you've got to like fight for these objectives. I feel maybe this is the play by play caster in me. I just have bloodlust in my eyes and I want to see them go at it. But a three and O oh, Shivana, you have the smite at least by the time to smite the Herald away. Don't just willingly give it up. Yeah, I think in that situation, you, you're tanky enough 
that you could probably survive a moment in there to get one last back hit in and smite it away. Even if you do not get the Herald, you at least deny them the Herald. So I think that would have been a better option, but you know, showing the respect, knowing that, hey, Zoot's just teleported in. Oh no, baddie. Oh, this Zoranos could, badly. could be in a bit of trouble. I mean, it's a 2v1 and Zoranos will be scared away for now. And Vegan Bandit, you know, he, he is more known, I believe, for his Terra play, and that was banded away, and we're seeing him on the Braum instead, but I still think he's put a strong performance in. For the University of New South Wales, like, they really are going to be relying on Vegan and Bandy in this one, as here comes the dive Aww. attempt. We'll be curious if we even get under the tower. Bandy's already taken so low. Unisoft on the flank. We'll take the Ezra down. Yes, a teleport's coming through, but it might be too little too late, unless it's two members. University of New South Wales, they are able to find one forward on the backside. Thomas Shen will fall as well to Nice Joke, but on the other side, Ozo, once again, kind of turning into Ono, oh has to flash defensively, and now Unisoft is the one who is in trouble. The passive is Pwok, but Zornos, the big angry bear, He's the one you've got to be careful. He's the raid boss. He'll chomp down on Nice Joke. And now Ozo, the last man standing under the tower, is able to dodge the elastic slingshot. But that can only buy so much time. He will go down as well. An ace for the University of Sydney as it was a 4v5 up top. Look who's pushing and putting pressure on the base. Look who's putting pressure on the, on the inhib tower during that fight. I believe they're just going to pop Herald here, bot lane, and just keep going. Or he's going to save it for another fight. The, like... A really nice ulti coming out from, you know, nice joke there, like getting uh, kills on the sideline. But look at Z uh, Zoranus here. Look how strong he is. Just being able to tank all of that up, deleting nice joke there with a chomp, saying goodbye, see you later. Yeah, that was, uh, you know, every time Zoranus or any sort of odd pick comes from the University of Sydney, uh, you know, a sticky Ricky classic, it always impresses me. And that's why. I, I, I hate to sound a little arrogant, but I never doubted him in terms of this <laughs> Volley Bear coming through, especially on Zarnos. He is putting on a clinic today. We saw perfect laning, perfect freezing. Even when he dove, got dove, I should say, and died, he still found a kill. Even when he kind of took an awkward engage because he was putting pressure on the opposite end of the map, he still found the kill in the 1v3, 1v4 situation. And Zarnos has been a treat to watch in this one. And I don't think he's done yet. This is definitely uh, one of those games that should be turning a lot of heads and saying, okay, we need a plan to deal with Sydney's top half of the map. Yeah, and this is what we've said every game so far. As we've gone into it, we've said, you know, this team plays well, but the Udisoft Zoranis combo is too good to let go. So I think that's come down to it. And here we're seeing another reason. This is a, just another game for them showing why that combination is so good. And that's not to take away from the performance of the other three players on Usid. Mm. Zoot, Shen, and Forward have all been playing at, like, incredibly well this game. You've got a 2-1 um, Sindri. You've got a 3-1 with a CS advantage misfortune. They are all doing damage, and they are all going to be doing exceptionally well for this team. Yeah, absolutely. But on the opposite side, too, like, I have seen good things from Vegan Bandit. I've seen good things out of Nice Joke as well. Like, they have the mechanical skills. It's just unfortunately so much pressure has been put on this red side just because of how disastrously the top lane went they may have a pick right now zoot is the target mid camps racing to try and get there but won't get there in time the tidal wave holds vegan bandit down that'll be the kill the bullet time oh zoning the backside of university of new south wales away as baddie was left on his own he was the second man to fall Zeus, even looking over the wall, he wants a bit more. Midcam might be that target as well. This dragon is very low and has to retreat, and that is five members of Sydney Strong knocking on the door of the University of New South Wales. <laughs> I love how <laughs> in that fight, Zoranus just ran right past everyone and went baddie. Yep. You're mine. He didn't care for, you know, Midcam. He didn't care for Nice Joke. He went, no, baddie, you're mine. I mean, it's uh, like Nocturne without the gap close, right? Yeah, That's how he's playing it. And instead of gap close, you get extra tankiness, which he has been using to get a couple cheeky kills. So yeah, instead, the, show instead of the gap close, you just have boots, Q, and uh, dead man's. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. As Baron will be taken by Sydney, a 22-minute Baron, one of the fastest ones we've seen so far. However, silver lining for the University of New South Wales, they will get their third dragon, and that does mean you know Baron Buff will run out. Mountain Drake will be back. That would be a Dragon Soul. New South Wales, they're bleeding, they're bruised, they're battered, but they're not dead yet. Yeah, they're, they're bleeding, they're bruised, but they've got a Band-Aid somewhere. So, like, that's their only saving grace right now. Um, 
I think if they can get this Mountain Soul, it's going to put them in a better position. The question is, with this Baron buff, does Usid give them the chance to get the, the Mountain Soul? Or are they just going to push it and end before that can even come up? That's hmm. another four and a half minutes. A lot can change in four and a half minutes. I mean, at this stage, you have to look at how effective the University of New South Wales can be in either finding that, you know, amazing pick or relying on their wave clear. And unfortunately, when I'm looking at the two sides, I do like Sydney's wave clear a little bit more than New South Wales. And that could come back to bite this red side as you can already see the pressure just being put on by Thomas Shen. He's making it rain behind the towers. He's not letting New South Wales step forward to really inhibit those wave clears. And instead, we might be seeing the fight. That was a long slingshot for Booty Shaft. Its target was a nice joke, but it's not going to connect. Yeah, and I think that's just trying to blow flashes successfully like he got. Uh, he got nice jokes flash there. And see, this is the problem they have, is that Zoranis has been pushing this top lane the entire game. So now they're just going to get one forward. So they right. have to defend the mid lane, but if they defend the mid lane, Zoranis is just going to get the top lane for free. But if they have to commit multiple people to Zoranis, then they get the mid lane for free. So they're getting choked out here. They do not have the resources to deal with this. At the moment, though, they might have an opening as Udisoft was sent to the bot lane to make sure that wave will crash, but unable to capitalize on it, University of New South Wales. Now they have three fronts to worry about as Udisoft was able to get to that tower. That tower is low. In fact, we might see it go down, and this could lead to the fight. A great ultimate out of Udisoft does throw nice stroke and beating Magnet into the death sentence. That is University of Sydney. A great scatter three. It was max range. It allows Udisoft to go further, and he's slowing the Vegan Bandit down. Fortunately, he's able to jump to safety. On the other side, though, Bandit was able to find Thomas Shen, and that is one damage dealer gone. Batty, though, gave up a lot of his life as Uzuranos. He's okay left alone. He's just going to keep fighting. The True Shot Barrage doesn't do a lot to dissuade the University of Sydney as they keep looking for more and more. One inhibitor falls, two inhibitor falls, and that mid one is next on the line. University of New South Wales, they're looking for that fight. They need to get Zoot down. They did get the Nami. They will get the uh, mid laner as well. Zoranos, though, he has joined the fight, and he is in the middle of everything. Look at the damage he does to Ozo. Look at the damage he does to everyone with that area of effect auto. Vegan Bandit now on the road, but Udisoft's just going to pull him right on back. Vegan Bandit will be the next to fall. That's a double kill, and Batty, how well can he kite on this as well? Well, he's got that Zach teeny tiny, and one sure auto will proc the passive. Zoranos does fall as well. Batty would be able to get this next kill, and the University of New South Wales will do they? Udisoft immediately pops the Batty, and it's nice Joku gets the kill instead. Has to use Shockwave to save the inhibitor, and New South Wales survive by the skin of their TPT. <laughs> Oh, jeez. Oh, Udisoft getting a, getting a sympathy kill there at the end. Uh, Batty, I don't know what happened there. Did Batty's Mystic Shot just go through him? What happened there? Uh, it, it was just a... I think how does that, 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 time how does that even happen? I mean, why stand on the Zack? You're why, a great why character. Stand here? I want to uh, see what happens, but this is a great fight. Um... Zoranus, this entire time, by the way, is just pushing top lane for free. Um, so they get two inhibs out of this, nearly triple inhibbing them. Baddie, though, blowing up Thomas Shen is a big turning point in this fight for UNSW. You know, it's still not enough, I don't think, but it was, you know, it was a moment that they were able to get some kind of relief. Yeah. And it was relief desperately needed, as you can see right here. So this is where, you know, it was a great re-engage, capitalizing on the fact that Zernos was all the way on the opposite end of the base. And by the time he did get there, New South Wales had pretty much won this fight, yet just showing how far ahead Zernos as well as Udisoft really were. They just made it so hard for um, UNSW as this was happening, you know, that middle inhibitor just getting chunk after chunk after chunk. All right, so here comes Nice Joke. So he's able to kind of take care of Zernos now. This is what I'm super curious about. Why is he standing on the Zack? He cancelled his auto twice. <laughs> he cancelled his auto twice on the Zack walls. Oh, action happening though in real time as forwards Ooh. already taken out, but at what cost? New South Wales, they still want this fight. They want this Bully Bear. They think he has the bullet time was actually immediately cancelled by Ozone. That's a lot of damage count, but it doesn't matter because the front line is allowed to keep pushing forward. And New South Wales, they're trying to fall back. Yeah, they got rid of Udisoft, but there is still Zornos, there is still Zoot, and there is still Thomas Shen, and they want to end this game. Batty going to do what he can, but unfortunately, he does not have the happy feet required to save this game. It all comes down to Ozo, the man who has struggled from start to finish, and he wants no part of anything. We might even see a tower 
hard dive. The wards are coming through. Shen's looking for it. Hoso's as far back as you could be. That's okay, Sydney. They'll take the win. They'll remain 3-0, and they remain the team to beat. Yeah, right now, that was a dominant performance.